Welcome back to another exciting session of WordCamp Santa Clarita 2021. Hope you've been enjoying your time. My name is Megan, and I'll be emceeing the next session here in the Revolution Track, bringing you topics in marketing and design. Our next session is how savvy entrepreneurs automate WordPress maintenance tasks. So we are about to hear from the one and only Maestro Stevens. He loves helping minority owned brands connect with their audience, utilizing marketing strategy and automation. He is the founder of the Iconic Expressions Marketing Consultancy, specializing in content marketing strategy based in Ohio. And of course, before we begin, I wanna encourage you to use the YouTube chat to enter all your burning questions for him to answer. With that, I'll pass it over to Maestro. Hello, everybody. Hello, Word Campers. I want to give a special thanks to WordPress and WordCamp San Clarita for having me uh, be here today for this presentation. And today's presentation is called How Savvy Entrepreneurs Automate WordPress Maintenance Tasks. I am your host, Maestro Stevens, and today's presentation is brought to you by Iconic eLearning. So let's get into it. So let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I personally love helping people connect with their audience while utilizing brand marketing strategy and automation. Iconic eLearning was born after this recent economic downturn as an education service for minority entrepreneurs looking to break into this competitive and underrepresented and volatile job market. The platform enables people like you to improve their business skills and achieve their entrepreneurial dreams. Our team of industry experts offer tailored support and guidance. We also provide free outcome focused content to members with actionable and practical insights to help make them their, um, to help make their brands iconic. As you can see, we are going to just do this. Um, I'm going to make some mistakes, and it's only because I'm probably a little bit nervous. This is my second time, uh, and you're like probably like, why is he still nervous in the second time? It's just because it's it's fun, it's new, it's fresh. It's like going to school for the you know your freshman year, and it's the first day. That's how it feels for me. <clears throat> Let's talk about this agenda though. Website automation. In part one, we are going to go over website automation from an overview standpoint, just so I can get you prepped for the second part, which is when we're going to dive deeper into maintenance. So we're going to talk about ma website maintenance automation, specifically with WordPress. All right, let's get to part one. And speaking of part, let me wet my, my, my throat here. I'm a little parched here. All right, Woo! let's get it. Website automation overview. What is website automation? How does website automation work? And why is website automation important? Well, let's get into that first. What is website automation? Well, what I believe website automation is, is a operational um, uh, uh, situation. And it consists of processes that have tasks and actions. Um, so, you know, something in my opinion that you can think about when it comes to operation, I love always go to the old school McDonald's with, with Ray Kroc, right? and how he was able to create automation in an old school way by putting certain people and certain tools and equipment closer to each other in a strategic way. So that way, everything that moved in this workflow when people wanted their fries or their hamburger uh, or their milkshake, it went fast, you know, and people had to do tasks and actions had to happen. And that was like the old school way of website automation. How does website automation really, really work? Well, website automation works in a way where you have these triggers and that's the starting point of the automation and then you it creates an action. So these triggers create an action uh, and in order to create that action, you have to have some sort of connection in between, right? You wanna, something has to be connected. 
And I'm going to give you another example because I gave you a McDonald's example. So let me give you um, something more sporty like, right? Let's talk about, uh, let's use American football as an example. And the reason why I'm saying American football is because I know we have international viewers. We have people all around the globe watching uh, this presentation. All right. So when we think about American football, let's think about a, a quarterback and a quarterback is starting a play and the quarterback hikes the ball, gets the ball and throws the ball to a wide receiver. The wide receiver then catches this ball and runs to the end zone for a touchdown. That is how you can think about website automation uh, from a metaphorical standpoint. And you would have something be triggered, which is the quarterback starting the play, right? And then the quarterback wants to make a connection to this wide receiver. So they throw the ball, which is information um, that this trigger is creating or starting. And that information is then connecting to the wide receiver, which is the action, right? The catch and the run for the touchdown. And that right there, people, is, I mean, that's the best way that I can explain website automation, um, just to give you a, a, a basic understanding. Why is website automation important to you? I would say website automation is, is very, very important to us all because the benefits of website automation are saving time. And who doesn't want to save more time? Um, you also, you're also going to get better data information transfer accuracy, and you're going to get resource management efficiency, which I call money, staff, etc. Like you're going to be able to manage your resources way better, so much better. And sometimes your resources are even your tools and your equipment. You can imagine. Um, Imagine managing all those subscription services and and plugins um, and what else? What else? Apps and you know business apps. Just managing all that stuff with automation, and that's what it does. That's one of the benefits. Now, since we talked about the benefits, we gotta move into the consequences. And the consequences of doing these processes manually are wasting your time. You're gonna waste some time. You're gonna waste your energy. And we all need a little bit more energy, especially during these times in life. Uh, you're also gonna waste your resources. Then you're going to have inaccurate data information transfer. And most likely, you're going to be losing money. I'm talking about constant revenue and profit loss. Now, I'm going to have to have some assumptions or I'm just going to assume for this presentation only, I'm not going to be assuming everything in life, but just for this presentation that you have a WordPress site already set up or you're setting one up. I'm going to assume that you understand your website category type. What I mean by that is, are you an informational type of site, a blog? Are you an e-commerce site? Are you a membership site? What kind of site are you? Um, I'm going to assume you have a little bit of Donetto uh, and are willing money. You're willing to purchase professional plugins um, when necessary, because I'm going to talk about free and pro versions of some plugins so I can get you prepared right. I got to get you right. And then I also I'm going to assume that you understand the difference between both these paid plugins and its applications and the support, because that's what you get when you pay for something. You normally get a little bit more premium care with it, which is support in the uh, WordPress plugin world. Let's dive into the next slide. OK, normally with website automation, for the most part, you're going to hear terms like web hooks and APIs. And I didn't feel it was fair uh, or it was right of me not to talk a little bit about this. But the part two, when we speak on it, when it comes to maintenance, we don't really have to use web hooks or APIs in order to get the job done, for a lack of a better term. But I still wanted you to have a indication, right? I want to plant that seed in you when you start getting with website automation, getting to website automation outside of maintenance is concerned. So with webhooks, uh, webhooks 
uh, are, we call webhooks and APIs the glue of website automation, but in particularly, webhooks are call requests from HTTP posts based on data updates on external systems. And these are normally done via URLs, like actual URLs that you put here, up here in your browser. When it comes to APIs, which are application programming interfaces, and we just use API for short, call, APIs are call requests and responses of data regardless of data updates on external systems. The difference between the two from a nutshell, just from a very basic standpoint, is these are regardless of data updates, whereas webhooks are based on updates. So if I can make this more practical, if you're using automation, an automation tool, and you go with webhook instead of API, you have a better chance of saving resources because there, nothing's happening unless there's an update. API, things could be happening when there's no update on either side, and that can cost resources. So I hope you kind of understand it from a overview, just, just from a very basic overview standpoint between the two. Uh, and then you can redo your research, do your homework. I always encourage it. Um, but we don't really need to know all of the API and the webhook description and, and environment to get to this next part right here. This is the juicy part. This is the part that I believe you really want to know and what you came here for in today's presentation. Let's talk about WordPress maintenance automation. In WordPress maintenance automation, we're going to talk about updates and backups. Then we're going to touch on caching and image optimization. I'm even going to put a little bit of video optimization in there. And the last part we're going to talk about is malware scanning and removal, right? So all of this has to do with performance and security. That's what I really want you to get out of these tips, uh, some of these strategies, right? The way that I think, everybody may not think like this, but this is my mindset of thinking. And I also want you to just understand uh, how this could be utilized to just it, go back to the beginning, those benefits, save you time, resources, make you money, all sorts of things. All right, let's get into it. Updates and backups. Instead of me just talking to you um, and showing you slides in this presentation, I really, really, really want to show you more in depth by uh, allowing you to see an example within WordPress while I demonstrate what these look like. I think you would appreciate that more. If you don't appreciate that more, I'm so sorry. If you, if you like slides better than you like you know, seeing an actual demonstration. But for those of us that want to see a demonstration, I'm going to go there. <clears throat> updates and backups. We're going to start with updates. And updates, when we're talking about updates, we're talking about uh, um, you know, getting to the most current version of the, of the uh, uh, tool or the technology that you're using. And the most popular type of updates in WordPress are WordPress at its core, WordPress themes, and WordPress plugins. Those are some of the most popular updates that you're gonna be thinking about when we talk about WordPress. When it comes to WordPress core, let's let's get into it, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go over here to a testing site that I made, um, called a, sta a sta staging site, sandbox, or so many different terms. Uh, but let's get into this. I'm gonna get into, let's see, let's see. It's always one of those situations where I'm trying to like get into my updates. Here we go, updates. Like if I don't see updates up here, for some reason my brain doesn't register as fast because when you see updates, you just click it. But if you don't see any updates, which I don't have any at this moment, uh, then you have to actually go and click, uh, go to dashboard and then click update. So just a trick for some of you all who you know think like me in that way. Uh, so updates, when it comes to WordPress core, you're gonna get updates here in this area. Now I wanna give you a really, really cool tidbit because I had to find this out on my own. I've only been using WordPress for about two to three years now. 
Uh, and as much as I know about WordPress, there's still stuff I learned every day. So I strive to uh, uh, help you save some time from the learning curve aspect of things to give you those little tips that I think that a lot of people aren't going to be thinking about. One of those things is WordPress uh, at its uh, core level. If you are using a shared hosting plan with something like SiteGround or DreamHost, um, GoDaddy, you're most likely not going to see anything here besides what you see in my uh, view, which is this site will not receive automatic updates for new versions of WordPress. If you were using a virtual private server, meaning you are managing your own server uh, using a, a tool like platform like Cloudways, uh, you would see a notification here saying uh, um, you, you, know, you are receiving updates, automatic updates of WordPress, and it allows you to switch back and forth between the core updates or the version updates. And that is pretty cool. Um, but normally on the shared hosting side of things, they take care of that on their server end. So that's why you don't see anything here when it comes to updates because it's happening in the back end on the server level. Um, and then you don't see any updates in the plugins in the theme area is because what we're gonna get into next, I have enabled automatic updates here in WordPress. Uh, that feature is directly here within WordPress and I can take care of that and let me show you how that's done. All right, so let's go to install the plugins here. And let's start off with the plugins and then we'll get I'll get into the theme. Uh, so from the plugins aspect, you can look here and see in this right hand area, um, this right column, you can easily click this button to enable and disable automatic updates. And that is awesome. I love it because it saves you so much time. Updates used to be a hassle in WordPress before WordPress 5.6. And now WordPress has done a great job of saying, hey, we've listened to your feedback and we want to make things easier for you so you don't have to use plugins to do this or other third party resources. And you literally just click the button and now you have automatic updates. Boom, bam, bing. Well, <laughs> we're there. Cooking with grease, as grandma says. All right, let's go to the theme. And I'm not going in the order of the actual slide, so hey, just, just follow me down the yellow brick road. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm gonna get you there. The next update is for the theme, right? And this is the last one we're gonna talk about when it comes to updates. It's just as easy as a plugin. You just click this handy dandy button uh, and it goes boom. Well, it doesn't go boom, I go boom, but it, you know, the update turns on and then you just turn on and then you're enabled, right? And you're good to go. Your hands are, your hands are wiped clean. You're done. You're done. Updates are good. So now you have your WordPress core updating. You have your plugins updating and you have your theme updating. It does not get that easy. It doesn't get any easier than that. You can even update, uh, auto update um, other themes that you have installed on your site just as easy. So you don't just have to have one theme on your site. Um, some people do recommend having a backup, even if it's deactivated, but then also keeping it updated because you don't want, uh, and this is another tidbit, that's how people do get issues and get hacked because they don't update their plugins and their themes or WordPress itself. So then old versions uh, get compromised and sneaky bots and people tend to take advantage of that. That is why you want to keep your uh, WordPress up to date. OK, now let's talk about backups. First, let me get a drink. A water. Because I was thirsty again. All right. Let's talk about backups. And this is a per I, I pair these two together because they work like peanut butter and jelly. Right. They 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 work like uh, milk and cereal. They work like Bonnie and Clyde. Well, I probably shouldn't be using Bonnie and Clyde as an example, huh? uh, but they work really well together. OK. And the reason why I say that is because updates can also cause problems, just like not updating can cause problems. And we don't want no problems, right? You know, more money, more problems, but not should be not more update, more problems, right? We don't want more problems. We use backups to help mitigate those problems. And what backups do is just in case there is a problem, you have a backup to get you 
back up. <laughs> I just said, okay. <laughs> See what I did there? I, I, I promise that wasn't planned. But you, you're going to have something to get you right again because issues are going to occur. This is WordPress. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts and it's not because of WordPress itself. It's because people tend to do a lot with WordPress. And with that being said, backups will allow you to be prepared for those issues. With backups, we're going to have two type of main backups that we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about server backups. We're going to talk about offsite backups. Server backups are the backups done with your hosting account. Going back to when I spoke about shared hosting um, with or 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 um, a virtual private server, right? So your own hosting, managed hosting, you are normally going to have your hosting provider back up on their server level. That is great. That is wonderful. But you don't want to count on them alone. You want to have a backup for the backup, right? We got a backup for the backup and the backup for the backup and the backup for the backup and we back it up, up, up. And we have that backup for the backup just in case something goes wrong with the backup. I, I added that little you know jingle in there and I've never done that before, but I added that in there because I wanted you to remember how important it is to back up. I'm gonna go here back in the Word, this WordPress testing site that we're here, you know, our play site, and let me show you what I use for the backups here. So now with backups, we are going to want to use a plugin, and that's where the offsite backup comes in. Oh, here, let's go to a plugin. Um, I love, I love, <laughs> I love WP Vivid as one of my backup solutions. Um, there are other backup solutions out there. I'm gonna, there's Updraft Plus. Um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get to others. But normally, you know, it's one of those things where if you see, it's just preference based. But the fundamental features in each one of these backup plugins should be very, very similar. The first thing you normally want to do when you use a backup plugin is, well, let's go here. You want to set up your cloud storage. And the reason why I say that is, Cloud storage can be free, so there's no excuse for people, for us as humans, to have cloud storage right now because it's free. I recommend you do pay for cloud storage to get more storage, but there's so much free storage out there, it's ridiculous. It's in the cloud, like up, up there, right? It's in the cloud. Put it up there and, and leave it alone but let it back up. And what we do is we can set up with Google Drive, we can set up with Dropbox, Microsoft One, whatever it is that floats your boat, set that up. And then once you set up your cloud storage, go to your backup schedule and create your backup schedule. Scheduling is the term, no, that's you know, the term we're using in, in reference to automation, right? You schedule it and then it automates. It starts to back up on that schedule. There are two types of backups here within the backup system. There's incremental backups, and then there's a general backup. I recommend, and you know, I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, and, uh, uh, but I recommend that you go with the general backup because it does a full backup, and there's less chances of issues and problems happening. However, incremental backup, just as it states incremental step-by-step, step, backs up your website by doing weekly cycles, by doing uh, cycles every hour, just on the files. So it backs up just the files, and then it does a database every week. So you gotta think, you're not backing up the entire database all the time, which in the general backup, you are normally doing that unless you choose otherwise, right? Because you can choose, I wanna back up the database, the files, exclude, I want to back up everything, some things, and you have that choice. And then you can say, I want to send it to a remote storage. And once you do that, see, it's not letting me do that because I don't have a remote storage set up. It's saying, no, 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 no. To keep me with Tumble, no, no, no. Uh, but I can't back it up to anything because of the fact that I don't have a cloud storage set up. That's backing it up, people, right? I mean, you got to back that thing up like juvenile. Uh, but let me show you real quick how you can get to 
other choices for backup. So let's just type in backup. I probably said backups like 20. If I can get the world record of backups in this presentation, that would be awesome. Um, Updraft Plus, like I just mentioned, you have Jetpack, you have Backup Pup, uh, Backup Migration, and then WP Vivid, good old handy Vivid right there. You have all these choices. That's what backing up will do. Please, please, folks, back that thing up. Back up the website, okay? We don't need no problems. Let's move to caching. Caching, right? Not catching, like the wide receiver reference. No, caching is in its simplistic form uh, giving your audience, pe your visitors that come to your website, a way of getting their content faster. So thinking of yourself as a person who visits a website, you remember the last time you went to a website for the first time? My very first time. You went to the house, I mean, not the house, woo! You went to a website the first time. And then at that first time, the website, it, it loaded kind of slow, right? It didn't really load that fast. Then you went to the website a second time and it loaded so much faster. That's most likely because that website has caching involved, which means it's in my simplistic way to explain it, that the resources, they took a copy, right, of the resources being used to show you what you see on the website. It took that copy and placed it in an environment digitally, online, kind of the cloud, right, or on a server, you know, server around you, it placed that closer to you so when you went to the website, you're able to see that, con that content so much faster. And it just does that so quickly, you guys. I mean, like the blink of a second of an eye, it does it so fast, it's ridiculous. That's what caching, that's what caching really does. So it helps you see content faster, it helps your audience see content faster uh, when they go to your website. And there's other, there's, I mean, so many nuances and techni technicalities behind it and all different types of caching, which I added right here, the top three most important caching, in my opinion, or at least basic caching to understand, which is website caching, server caching, and browser caching. And with those three caching, if you have those enabled and you're taking care of those for the most part, you're, you're good. You're like, you're good to go. So how you enable caching, because I, I'm, I, have, I have a feeling a lot of people watching this, um, there's some people who understand what caching is and well, Maestro, you just explained it all wrong or you didn't give enough or, you know, they're probably just, just killing me here, right? With, and that's okay, I can, I can take it, I can take it. But there's those of you all who don't understand it, won't understand it, and it's, it's just not gonna happen. So let me show you ways where you can still get performance you need of caching without having to go too, too deep in what it is and how it works and all that extra stuff um, until you need that extra help. Let's go to plugins here. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go to plugins here. And the two plugins that I have, let me go back to my slide because I actually, uh, SG Optimizer and WP Rocket. Um, first and foremost, you only want to use one caching plugin per website, but I am showing you options so that you understand that you, you, have, you have the options. You have multiple choices you can choose, but only choose one. SG Optimizer is one of my favorite caching plugins because of two reasons, right? Two reasons right here. One reason is, is it comes with my hosting, which is SiteGround. I use SiteGround and SG Optimizer is a plugin that works directly with SiteGround's hosting. It doesn't work with any other hosting, but SiteGround properly at least. And it comes with it and it's a really, really good plugin. It is a kind of a, a jack of all trades caching plugin where it does a lot at one time. Let me show you what I mean here. So I'm in uh, SiteGround and it says dynamic caching. That's the main type of caching when we talk about WordPress caching or website caching is the dynamic caching here. And you wanna turn this on. And then there's other types of caching. You have the browser specific caching. So you're able to turn on browser specific caching as well. And depending on your hosting, there's memcache. And you're able to turn that on as well too. And that's what's kind of cool here because you're handling a lot of different caching types right here within one plugin. 
So that's why I like side ground on that end. Now here's the second reason. It's kind of a weird double fold reason uh, in, in a weird way. The second reason why I like the side ground plugin because it's really a replica uh, of, or a little brother because they copy a lot of the big brother, which is my favorite plugin for caching called WP Rocket. So let me turn off side ground. So I want to practice what I preach in front of y'all. So let's deactivate SG Optimizer. And let's go to WP Rocket and let's activate that. All right. And then you're going to see it up here in the tab. And I'm just going to click WP Rocket. Now, here's the cool part about WP Rocket. Um, unlike SiteGround, if I'm not mistaken, and don't please, you know, if you know about this, don't, you know, don't curse me out. Don't curse me on your head, please. Uh, but if you know about this, I don't remember if SiteGround had its that dynamic caching directly turned on or if I had to turn it on when I first um, installed or SiteGround installed the plugin and I came into my WordPress dashboard. Even if it did, sorry, even if it did, um, I'm going to say the biggest difference between these two is WP Rocket is made to work out the box. So SiteGround caching plugins is free, but it comes with SiteGround's hosting, which is not free. WP Rocket is a premium plugin that comes out uh, just it's an outstanding plugin that out the box, meaning when you add it to your website, it just starts the caching process immediately. It just works like that. Everything else you do from there, any other optimization you do that you turn on, that you optimize, it's a bonus. And that's what's really, really cool about WP Rocket. Now, if you want to go into the actual cache tab, you can enable caching for mobile devices, which I do encourage. And then you save that. You're all good to go. That's how great WP Rocket is. And that is the value you are getting out of investing into a plugin like this. You don't have to use this, but that's the value that you're getting. Let me show you how you can get to other free caching plugins via the WordPress repository by just going here and, and typing in caching. Now you have all these choices and they pretty much do the same thing. It's just gonna be your preference. So I'm not gonna give you any advice on how you choose. I just encourage you to choose. But get your, your website cache and only choose use one cache for that. All right, oh, you, what, what did you think I was gonna say? For that, for your website, only use one caching plugin for your website. All right, let's go to the next one. Speaking of caching, let's move into image optimization, which is another performance based uh, operation that's going to give you more speed. It's going to make your website faster. And in the world of Google Web Core Vitals, I'm saying in the world because now Google has rolled out this update and it's here, folks. It's here. And in this world, we have to have websites fast. Like there is no more excuse to have a slow website. And if you do have a slow website, you're going to be penalized, right? Not penalized, but penalized. And you don't want to be penalized when you're looking to utilize your WordPress website for uh, to better your life, to to you know live your your dreams, to uh, sell your products and your 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 services you want your website to be fast so people can get to it so let me show you how let me show you how let me get to and it's so funny how short pixel always does this okay so with short pixel what this does is it compresses right and that's when we say optimization we talk about compressing an image which means we're reducing the image we're making the file size smaller i like to say stripping out the fat but i don't want to offend anybody so that's why i'm saying reducing the file size smaller um, and still keeping the quality the quality of the image intact so when people see it it still looks visually appealing but it doesn't have uh, it's not as big, and if it's not as big or large of a file, that means not as many requests are going to have to happen when a person is viewing this file on your website. In a nutshell, it just means your web page is going to load faster. And this is what Short Pixel does. And once you enable Short Pixel, uh, it, they give you, the, it is a free plugin and they give you free credits, but they do have a premium version that you have to pay for more credits after your free credits are done. But once you use Short, and it's very, very cheap, it's a very cheap plugin, right? 
Uh, and once you do it, you save and you bolt process. And once you save and you bolt process, it's going to start optimizing all your images. Now, all the images I have here are already optimized, so you can't. I can't show you uh, the process of the. And it's kind of boring anyway. You don't want to watch it. You probably want to walk away from it. You got to leave it open for it to finish. But you probably want to walk away from it or do something else. But at least it shows me and it shows you right here how much reduction. It reduced 60% of the images. That's so great. So where as 100% could have caused my site to load slow, now 60% is gonna help my website load faster. And then you can also create these website uh, web P versions of these images, which are gonna use additional credits, but these are just a even smaller file size of images for your website. And that's what that does. Okay, let's move on. Oh, and the types of compression in short pixel, I guess since I have that there, I probably should at least talk about a second. But the types of compression, you're usually gonna wanna use lossy. So that's for the most, for the most part recommended, use lossy because it's uh, giving you the best compression rate. Um, for most people, that means that it's going to give you the best balance of quality uh, and reduction. Whereas lossless, is going to and see how it's going to lossless is going to it's going to barely reduce right it's going to take it's not going to do as much compression as lossy would do and glossy is in the middle glossy is that balance between the two normally you're going to want to go with lossy because lossy still looks really good but if you're a photographer or your image heavy site you want to choose one of these glossy or lossless i hope i gave a good example for that how you would use it all right next malware scanning and removal um, this is going to be very, very simple of a concept to understand, in my opinion, because I'm not going to go too deep into it because website security is a, I mean, it can go deep, folks, but I don't want you to have to go too deep. I want to give it to you on a basic level. I use Malcare for my website security. It's very, very easy. Once you uh, add it to your website, it asks for your email, and then it says, and press enter. Um, I hope it says press enter now, but you just enter your email, you click it and it starts the process and then you, you come to the screen and now it's protecting your site. It's protecting your site with a firewall. So it's meaning it's, it's holding back a lot of different bots and attacks and it's also scanning your site too. Constantly scanning your site for issues, for viruses, for threats, for malware really, uh, and other issues that can happen on your site. This is one choice to choose, but as I mentioned before, I love to give you all options. And one of my other favorite choices, so let's type in security into our search here, is iThemes. Uh, WordFence, is, WordFence is a very, very popular one, but I like to go with iThemes as well. And I recently, because this is a new, SiteGround has also come up with their own SiteGround security. So I started playing with this, uh, but before I used iThemes security, and now I use Malcare Pro. I use the Pro version of Malcare, and I also use SiteGround Security for other websites as well that I don't need the Pro version of Malcare for. Just, it's so easy to activate. It's so easy to set up. It's ridiculous. It's like two clicks. <clears throat> Same thing with iThemes. It's like two clicks, and you're good to go. And for the most part, when it comes to security, your best bet is to have a great hosting they handle most of your security issues for you. So that's security on the server level. Remember how we went to backups before? Security on the server level. Then you want security on the site level. This is where you add a plugin. And this saves a lot of issues from the future. And that's why I have them here. Malcare, iThemes, and SG Security. For your maintenance schedule, and we all gonna get on a schedule, I just wanted to make a really quick list for you all to take some snapshots of, uh, just to look at. When it comes to scheduling your maintenance tasks, you wanna think of them as daily, uh, weekly, and monthly. And for daily tasks, you wanna go with your security tasks, you wanna go with your backup tasks, you wanna go with your caching, your image and video optimization, and then your uptime monitoring. And I promise you I will show you some video optimization really, really quickly, but these are the things you wanna do on a daily basis, and those, these are the tools you want to use to help you with these operations and these processes, to automate your process. Let's go real quick and show you what I mean by, um, and the best way I can do is go to all pages, because I already set up a page for image optimization. And let's go to a uh, quick edit here. I'm gonna show you the back end. 
And this tool is called Presto Player. It's a new tool. It's a new media player tool, but it has image, not image, excuse me, video optimization aspects of it. And it's very, very easy. Um, I have added two videos here. One video I have used Presto Player YouTube, and then the other one I have used uh, Presto Player Upload. And you can just get as easy as clicking the backslash button and then searching for it, or you can click up here in the block area and just click Presto Player YouTube, vi video, uh, Vimeo, Bunny, which I highly suggest. You'll get so much value out of using Bunny. Uh, and it's very cheap. Uh, and you get these options to do some optimization when it comes to your video. So it not only throws a skin, a different type of skin over your video, but it optimizes your video too for betting better loading times and viewing experiences. And in this situation, um, for YouTube, uh, for YouTube, I, you can do go to default and you can have, let me show you real quick. I'm going to go to preview because that's, you know, you probably, you probably want to see it. So right here, bam. And what's cool about this is, is that I can, on the pro version of Presto Player here, I can create a preset. So these are video presets that have pre been pre-made for the free version. On the pro version, you can create your own preset. So let's go to preview again for the preset. And then it hides YouTube. I, th I have, believe I have the option to hide YouTube. So this is a YouTube video, but you don't see YouTube um at all right anywhere here but it's a youtube video isn't that kind of cool so that's one thing and then when you use buddy or you upload your own video you get performance uh preference here and you get video playback video load speed and extreme and they give you they, they, they share with you right here what that means for documentation so if you don't understand what these mean just click here for documentation this also helps with video optimization performance if you go to Presto Player settings, it also gives you optimization for performance right here, but dynamically loading your JavaScript. So that enables uh, you to reduce your requests. That's huge, folks, when it comes to video optimization. So I hope you understand the power of Presto Player. There's a free and a uh, premium version as well. And with uptime monitoring, you can just literally type in uptime monitoring to WordPress uh, search repository, like I mentioned before. And you can get a plugin just to see, um, to make sure, ensure that your website is up. And when it's not up, you get a notification to let you know, hey, your website has been down because websites being down are not good. For weekly uh, automation scheduling, you want to think about updates and malware scanning, like I showed you before. And then for monthly, you want to think about database cleanup. And that is something you can do with WP Rocket. So let me show you that really, really quickly. With database cleanup with WP Rocket, you can do that with other plugins as well too, but WP Rocket is a one size fits all. Again, that's why the investment is worth it. Go to database over here and then check these in, um, check all these and then click save. And that's what database cleanup is. It'll automatically schedule your database cleanup for whatever you set here, uh, um, schedule automatic cleanup for daily, weekly, monthly. And I, like I mentioned, I say you set it for monthly. And then last but not least, broken links. Same thing as the uptime monitoring. Just type in broken link checker or broken links and you can use a plugin uh, that will check for broken links. I like to use Rank Math as my SEO plugin uh, because Rank Math has a broken link checker in, in it, the premium version, but you don't have to use Rank Math, even though Rank Math is free, uh, but you can use any other broken link checker. I didn't wanna go over it, uh, too deep because I, I consider it like a, a, a side maintenance. It's maintenance, but it's not maintenance. It's SEO, but it's still maintenance. I just thought, hey, you probably need to know this. And that's pretty much it. So let's go back to the plugins right quick. Just so you can get an overview of some of the plugins I have here in the back, back end. Oh, and here's a cool one. Disable auto update email notifications, right? For me, this is important because when you turn these updates on, you're gonna be getting emails all the time. And I use this, I use a plugin to disable them so that I don't be getting emails. I'm not getting any emails from updates. And that's something that's huge for me because I don't want those emails. And I hope you enjoyed 
this presentation, this information. I had a great time. I hope you learned something today. If you did not, uh, I apologize if it was boring or if it was too extreme. Um, I just wanted to be me and I just wanted to have some fun with you all. Because automation, let's just face it, it can be a boring subject. And if you don't make it a little hip, a little modern, a little fun, you see like when I'm doing my shoulders here, I was like adding a little bit more to it. <laughs> if you don't make it, it something that people would want to learn, I don't feel that people are going to learn it. And these are just some of the basic concepts, some of the tips that I've learned in automation, especially dealing with WordPress maintenance tasks. My name is Maestro Stevens. I am here for Iconic eLearning, and I want to thank WordCamp and WordPress for having me here. Uh, WordCamp San Clarita specifically. And if you want to get a hold of me, people, if you specifically want to get a hold of me and you want to learn more, you can always reach me and my team at hello uh, at iconicelearning.com, or you can connect with me, which I would love for you to do, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, if there's anything else that I can help you with or you just want to get some uh, tips and tricks beyond what we're teaching here today, go to iconicelearning.com and run wild with it. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Hopefully, I'll see you there too. Peace.